Sunday morning, about 7.30 a.m. We are underway, pushing uphill with breakfast, served in bowls. Just kind of lumpy out here, not too bad. We're about a mile offshore. Sorry for the shakiness. And uh, we're going to continue just opening up some more sea room between us and the lee shore. The wind is sort of, let's see, yeah, it's doing that. So I just want to get a couple miles between us and land in case we have engine trouble. We got some options to uh, troubleshoot and call for help. If we break down before we end up, into the cliffs here, I think there's very limited options to get the anchor set before you're in the breaking surf, just because uh, it's super deep right up to the shoreline. See, like right now, according to the chart, we're at about 350 feet. I have my chart set to feet, not fathoms. Yeah, feet, 350 feet right here. And right up along the shoreline here, you got you know, 186 feet, 270. 90 right there. Right, we're making 6.2 knots, pushing into some lumpy wind waves and swell. It's all small though, I don't know. I'd say about two foot is the average swell height. Maybe three. Yeah, that looks like a three footer coming at us right now. This one, yeah, I'll call that three, three foot. Vex on watch. Just waiting for bits of breakfast to get dropped. He's on uh, cleanup duty. One point three miles, nautical miles offshore. I'm going to give us three miles room before we make the right turn. So this is our eighth day on the boat, Sunday to Sunday. And we ran out of water last night and the day seven. It's actually the first time we've run out of water. We have stayed on board for more than seven days in the past, but uh, I've been good about running a jerry can, five gallon water jug back and forth from shore and putting at least five gallons a day on. I didn't do that this time and so here are the, the stats. Yeah we carry 150 gallons and that worked out to um, between the three of us we took nine showers. Uh, we've got an electric head that uses fresh water and uh, all of the dishes dishes three meals a day on the boat that uses up a lot of water we don't we're not conservative at all with any of those things um, it's probably shorten the showers a little bit but or just take less showers I mean we're pretty diligent about cycling the valve on and off uh, not leaving it running the whole time we're in there um, it'd be like a sailboat and add a salt water tap to the sink to do everything but the final rinse we could go super basic and do the dishes on the swim step but uh, all the little congested coves here at the island I don't think our neighbors would appreciate that so it works out to uh, just under 22 gallons a day to adults and a kid uh, I think if we were out here full-time we could probably cut that in half easily maybe even a third How we're using the boat, it's, uh, we're carrying more water than uh, we need. I think you know, if we had about four days of water, we'd be okay. And then uh, carrying cans back and forth as needed from shore to extend. The more pressing issue is the holding tank. I don't know the true capacity. I think in the spec sheet it's 40 gallons, uh, which gets us for only using the holding tank. About three days, maybe four. 
but if they're shoreside services and it's a mix of the two, it stretches longer. I don't know how long because uh, I don't have a functioning gauge for the black water tank. It doesn't work because it's a fiberglass coated steel tank, so the, the gauge I put on doesn't work for that type of composite tank. Uh, so yeah, the, I think the tank is 40 gallons, but it, we can't actually hold a full 40. Because the vent line is on the side of the tank near the top, and what happens is when we're rolling around at sea, the vent line clogs up, and then the uh, vacuum no, sorry, the tank gets pressurized the opposite. So it'll start uh, bubbling, backflowing through the joker valve on the head. That's usually the first sign I know I have a, a vent line issue. So that's not a fun job, sneaking that clear. So I'm always on the side of extreme caution of not getting that tank near, uh, let's say, the top third. I don't like to fill it more than halfway. But I don't actually know what the level is in there. So there's room in that cabinet if I cut through one of the pieces of plywood that is part of the structure of the bench seating and reinforce it. I could double the capacity of the tank easily as well as a new tank with all the fittings elbowing out of the top of the tank. Then we can fill it to the top. It would also make life easy for opening and closing the, the valves to pump because they'd be right under the seat cushions instead of buried down in the engine room.